This is the last big grammar topic we have. Well, this and that. These are words that we call demonstratives. These are pointing words. If you think about the English word demonstrate, well, you're pointing something out, you're showing it. And this and that often specify something a little more directly. And they often have this sense of distance, either physical distance or sometimes metaphorical. You know, you might say like, oh, I don't like that or that guy. Ugh. You could also say something like, officer, this penguin is entirely innocent. But that one, that's the one that stole the mackerel flavored candy bar. Well, this and that, they have this sense of physical or metaphorical distance. They're used to point out, sometimes distinguish things. And that's why we call them demonstratives. As far as their part of speech, they can be, well, they can be adjectives or pronouns. Now, you might also notice when you're looking at these words, well, hik hike hawk is this, and illa illa illad is that. And that looks a little bit familiar. The book has sneakily been using this in its trickiest form all this time as a bit of a pronoun. If you remember early on, they would say things like he. Ile was he. And that's it used as a pronoun, but you can also use it as an adjective to mean that. So, in English, you might say, well, that darn cat, if it's modifying a noun, is a demonstrative adjective. But if you just say, I'll take that, please, well, there, it's not modifying a noun. The that just stands on its own. It's in the place of a noun. And so, it's a pronoun. So, if we just take a look at these words and how they decline before getting on to how we use them, well, they function kind of like is, a, uh, id in terms of how they decline. You have distinct forms for the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter, and the patterns from the singular to plural are going to line up quite a lot. Let's actually start with illa illa illad first, the word for that, because this is the one that is closest to is, a, a, id. If you just replace the e with an ill -L in most forms, you will get exactly what you need. So, in the nominative, you have ille, illa, illad. And then in the genitive, just like you would have isaia, id, aeus, 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 here you have ilius, ilius, ilius. Just like you have ei, you have illi. It's a little different with illud here in the neuter, but other than that, you can pretty much just replace that e with ill, -L, and you're good to go. If we were in the classroom, we would be chanting this a lot. We would be going ille, illa, illud. Ilius, 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 Illy, 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 Illum, Illum, Illud, Illo, Illa, Illo, Illy, Illi, Illa, Illorum, Illarum, Illorum, Illis, 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 Illos, Illas, Illa, Illis, Illis, Illis. Kind of catchy. Do this on your own. I highly encourage it. So that is that. But if we look at this, it's pretty much the same, except the H, the H-U is a little funkier in a couple places. So you have hik, hike, hok, huyis, 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 huik, 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 that one's a little hard to pronounce, honk, honk, hok, 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 he, hi, hike, horum, harum, horum, he's, 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 imagine you're a snake with a bit of an accent, hos, has, hike, he's, he's, He's hik hike hok huis 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 quick 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 hunk honk hok 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 he hi hike horum 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 he's 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 hos hos hike he's 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 so both of these decline kind of like is a id we're not going to be able to drill this as much as we would in a normal class environment but you want to practice these a bit. Be familiar with these forms, maybe print this out or queue this file up on your computer. It'll be shared in the Google Classroom and keep it by your side. So if we use these, well, you can use this and that as pronouns. And the way the book has often used this is use it like he, she, or it to change subjects. This is actually the trickiest thing that you can do with illa, illa, illa in particular. And you've actually been used to this for a very long time. We just haven't talked about it in quite this way. So if we have a normal day in the life here with Marcus Canom Argo Dot said ille non cannot, well, Marcus gives a dinner to Argus, but he 
doesn't dine. This said Ile, but he, but that guy, meaning Argus here, well, that is really important for specifying who is not dining. If we were to just eliminate this, or eliminate that, rather, get rid of Ile, well, you suddenly have Marcus Canum Argo dot said non Cana. And now it says Marcus gives dinner to Argus, but doesn't dine. Well, who's not doing the dining? Here, in that case, this T ending is going to refer back to the same subject, Marcus. You have to use Ile in here to switch from Marcus being the subject in this clause to Argus being the subject in this clause. Ile used like this indicates a change of subject. And it could be Ila, of course, if we were dealing with a feminine thing or neuter. It doesn't really matter what gender we use here, but Ile on a pronoun, as a pronoun like that, is going to indicate a change of subject. Similarly, Scintilla librum quinto legit said Ile non audit. Scintilla reads a book to Quintus, but he doesn't listen. This said Ile again changes the subject. And if you think about it, we've had this a lot. We could even have something like a period. The punctuation doesn't matter as much. We could have just Ile non audit there. Scintilla librum quinto legit, Ile non audit. That still specifies that Scintilla is reading the book to Quintus, but he doesn't listen. This would even work if we were talking about somebody like of the same gender, like Horatii, right? So Horatii in the dative, she reads the book to Horatia, Illa, on out it. On, in this case, Illa is still referring back to Horatia, not Scintilla, because it indicates a change of subject when used as a pronoun like this. We could also use these and those to make a contrast. He, Feles, Amant, Illy, Canes. These guys, like dogs, like cats rather, those guys, like dogs. And you can sometimes skip repeating the verb because it would be a little boring to say these guys love dogs, these guys, these guys love cats, those guys love dogs. Repeating that verb would get a little boring, so we sometimes just don't repeat it. Latin might even want to put this verb all the way at the end here. It's a little less like the English word order, so on the reference sheet that you're going to get, it's going to go back in here, but it's not really necessary to have it either place. You could use it like this, hunk amo. I love this guy, right? Hunk, this guy. Because it's masculine, we're assuming that we're talking about people. If it were hawk, then you'd have to be just, well, this thing. Remember, if you have something on its own, an adjective or a pronoun, if it's masculine or feminine, we assume, unless otherwise specified, that it's talking about people. But if it's neuter, it's talking about stuff. That's why we've had things like omnia for everything, all the things, literally. But if we said omnes, then we mean everybody. Then I could say something like, canes huyes me terek. This guy's dog scares me. So the dog of this guy terrifies me. There you're using it like a pronoun too. And, well, you might default to masculine. Um, but if we had just been talking about, a, you know, a woman or a you know, a pastry monster from the moons of Jupiter, well, then you might use a neuter there. But in any case, quius is of this whatever, and it is being used as a pronoun. Now, we could use it like an adjective also. So Quintus hunk conum amat, non illum. Quintus likes this dog, not that one. And you can imagine Kanem Amat there too to fill out the sense of that sentence, but it doesn't really need to be specified. Using this and that in a con in the same sentence sort of implies a contrast here. You could use it as an adjective in this sentence. He serpentes in nawe non dormiant. These snakes don't sleep on the ship. Maybe you're implying that other snakes do, but maybe these are just snakes that are very close at hand. That makes you want to say these rather than those. Oh yeah, those snakes that you heard about, those don't sleep on the ship. Well, those are at some further distance, either physical or metaphorical. Similarly, let's say you want to find the best ship to sail in, you don't want to sink to the bottom of the ocean. You might say, in illa nawe navegare nolo. On that ship, I do not want to sail. I don't want to sail on that ship. And you're sort of implying a little bit of a distance there, like, get that ship away from me. Like, you want me to fly in that hunk of junk? No way. 
But if I said Hawk in this ship, well, maybe it's a little closer. Maybe you're considering it a little more. I'm putting perhaps a little bit too much weight on this, but think about as you go about your days, how you use this and that in English and try to substitute a that or a this and see if it still gets across the meaning that you would want to convey in whatever you're trying to say. Because you'll find that there are some subtle differences that we use here between the two words, this and that, that we don't often realize. And so now that is that.